Alright, hey guys, today we're doing a new video in Adobe After Effects, and I'll be going over a tutorial on cameras and null objects. Sorry, my throat is a little bit sore, so maybe I won't talk as much in this video as I usually do, but basically, when I was learning how to do cameras and null objects, I didn't really have a good understanding, and I didn't find a good video explaining when I should be using them and what exactly they their function was so I'll be going over that in this video really quickly I'll show you an example of when I used a null object and how how it looked so on my League of Legends channel which is Azure VFX the link will be in the description uh, last week I created a montage and around here you can see a bunch of famous streamers and we have this movement towards the top and then in a moment here it's going to scale and pan out and this all this movement was done with a camera and a null object so that in <clears throat> sorry that uh that leads to the question as to when should you be using a camera and when should you be using a null object for movement instead of um, instead of just using the actual values the scale the position the rotation values so whenever you are having footage in 3D space that should move relative to a different sort of footage, then you should be using a camera and a null object. So maybe that wasn't the best way to explain it, but I will give a demonstration uh, that should help you understand it a little bit better. Uh, another way to think about it is if you have uh, a bunch of different clips and you want to be panning out to them and you don't want to spend a lot of time on each clip scaling and positioning you can always use a camera and a null to control all of the movement so those are the two situations where you really want to use a camera and a null object instead of using the position the scale the rotation values so we have an old amv here i'm just going to really quickly cut out some footage that we can use in this demonstration so I'm just going to hit Control shift d to split this, move over here, um, Alt square bracket, clip that, Control shift d Alright, so I think for four clips should be enough so we have four clips I'm going to move them all to one side with the square bracket and then I'm going to just increase the time a little bit so we have some time to work with uh, maybe we'll just double all of the times so we have about two seconds still not a lot of time um, I'll probably stretch it a little bit longer All right, so now we have a decent amount of time. Uh, it's gonna look a little bit choppy, but the main focus is just working with the camera and the null. So we have four clips right here, and we have our background image right here, and that is just this water image. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our camera. We're gonna go up into layer, new camera. And I'm just gonna leave this at 15 mm, which is just the first preset right here. I'm gonna select okay. So we have our camera and then I'm going to create layer new null object and this null object is going to control all of the movement in this scene. So the first thing we have to do is make sure we use this parent and link right here, the pick whip. We're going to drag and drop it onto our null object. So we're going to drag and drop, drop that right there so now it will control all of the movement. And now every single scene that should be affected by the movement make sure it is set to 3d so if you can't see that you might have to hit toggle mo toggle switches slash modes so i'm going to select all of them that we want as 3d layers and now i'm just really quickly going to scale position rotation each of them uh, relative to each other so scale this down position it here Add a little bit of rotation. Oops. 
try to do this as quickly as I can. Again, you can always add a shape tool. You could add maybe a circular mask or something on top to make it a little more interesting. The boxes don't look super nice, but we're just trying to show you how to get the movement. So yeah, you could also add borders to this if you wanted, uh, however you really wanted to set it up. Let me turn on the next one. This one, we're going to make it a little bit smaller. And our final one, scale rotation position. Add a tiny bit of rotation here all right so now we have everything set up uh, we can stop isolating them turn everything on again you would probably add border or something to make it look a little bit nicer here but the great thing about having a null is you can control all of your movement right here so scale positioning rotation and for all of the clips not having to do it individually So we're going to start by keyframing all of them right here. And how you want to set up this camera movement is completely up to you. I'm just going to see how long. So maybe around one second, which is right here. We're going to jump over to our first scene. Oof. Everything is opposite when you are uh, working in a null. So... It can be a little bit awkward trying to scale, position, everything. Doesn't have to be perfect, but this is just a quick example. I'm going to select everything and easy ease it. And then because we are kind of doing a transition here, we want to make sure we have our motion blur enabled and we're going to select all of our clips and make sure we have motion blur enabled so that's right here i'm pretty sure yeah so we have our first zoom into our first clip right here so you can see how we did that positioning everything relative to each other we now jumped over here um probably not going to stay here for too long so We'll set our keyframes here and then we can jump off wherever we want which is really nice so i can have it scale out oops opposite direction uh, maybe we want to show this clip next i'm gonna jump over here i'm gonna scale in rotate it Then maybe we just scale it up a little bit. Oops, this got deselected. So you can see how very easily we can create really cool transitions. And everything is controlled right here. So we don't have to keep switching in between stuff. I would have to say this would be very good for montages, but also making any promo videos. It doesn't take a lot of time, but you can get really easy transitions. So we jumped over to this scene right here. Again, you can always switch out the background image uh, between transitions and stuff like that. We're going to jump over to our next one now. So we'll probably stay here for a short duration and then jump off to our next transition. Probably only have time for one more, so let's jump diagonally. Let's zoom out first. I'm going to jump diagonally to this top one. 
just like that. I'm going to scale in. I'm going to rotate this a little bit. And again, I'm going to stretch out all the layers so we can actually see how it looks in the end. Layer, time, time stretch, and maybe we'll set this to 600. Oof. So let's just zoom out. And we can we didn't really get a get any time to uh, hop over to our last clip, but this should be good enough to give you an understanding of how you might want to use cameras and nulls, what they're capable of, and when you should be working with them. Again, I will let this preview through a couple of times so you can you guys can take a look at what we created. So let me just scale this down. Ideally, we'd have more time so the transitions would look even better. But then again, we only had a very small amount of time to go over three transitions. But hopefully, you guys understand how you might want to use cameras, um, different applications of it. And uh, yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, got a little bit of a better understanding. And I will be uploading weekly tutorials on Adobe After Effects, so make sure to subscribe. 